four valves. Four valves seem to be absolutely everywhere. Even 125s and stuff nowadays are starting to be fitted with one, uh, one, four valve heads. So four valves per cylinder. If you have a four cylinder, obviously that's 16 valves for the entire engine. But why four? And is there five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a million? Yes, there is. Yamaha um, did a spurt with the R1 where they had five valves per cylinder. So two exhaust and three intake. We might as well put E in there so you see their exhausts. Intake, intake. So obviously we've gone from single um, or two valves per head uh, back in the day, all the old motorcycles and what have you, and the big Chevrolet block blocks and what have you for all the muscle cars and so on, and the Ford blocks and what have you were all two valves per head minis and so on and so forth. We're all two valves per head until you get the flash ones. Um, but obviously, we went from two, uh, there are three valves per head, we went to four. Like I said, there are some motorbike motorcycle examples where they have five generally they all stick to four so even the latest bikes out there you know the um, GSXRs and so on and the Hayabusa and what have you they have four valves so first we'll have a quick look at why the amount of valves matters and then we're going to look at why four valves of kind of winning out and five six seven and eight and all the rest of it kind of lose out so the number of valves you have is all about trying to get as much fuel and air into your cylinder and exhaust gases back out when you need to as possible. So obviously a cylinder is exactly that, it is a cylinder and if you want to stick in a fresh charge or you want to get the exhaust gases out ready for the next fresh charge to come in, you want a hole in this cylinder, you need ports but more importantly you need a hole and the biggest hole we can have is this big, the entire cylinder. We can come into the side, but we don't like to do that because you have to have uh, good ring control and so on and so forth. And it, it, you can't really control it that well. Ports are all determined by where the piston is, so then you have to mess around with that, and that's why two strokes are crap. Um, so it's all about geometry, it's all about circles. So if you have a circle in your cylinder head like this, you know, how many circles can you fit into this? To also include, you don't want to go too close to the edge, and to also include the valve seats and what have you. So obviously back in the day we used to have an, exhaust, an inlet valve like this and an exhaust valve like this. And there's all this wasted space, so obviously you progress from that. Now, because um, people might ask, why is the inlet bigger and the exhaust smaller? This is quite simple, simply because the inlet, the air that's um, expanding into the cylinder, is at atmospheric pressure. It's at 14.5 psi or 1 bar. When you come to the exhaust, um, the exhaust is at high temperature, which is at, it's at high pressure. So it can flow out of a smaller hole. And because you have this difference, if they were the same size, the exhaust port, in a sense, doesn't need to be that big where you want your inlet port to be as big as possible so you can operate so your power band can operate over a larger region so let's just say there's an imaginary invisible line down the middle the center where your spark plug would usually sit just in a two stroke where porting doesn't uh, the cylinder head doesn't matter because it's just a cap we would increase the inlet to as big as we can and then obviously we need a clearance between the two so your exhaust port is smaller because it doesn't need to be as big. So because of this reason this is why your inlet ports, uh, inlet valves and ports are bigger than your exhaust. Now, now that we've quickly covered that because I knew that would be a question that someone's probably going to ask, let's go back to our um, cylinder head. So we've had our two, so the next thing you can do to increase it is it decrease the amount the size of the valves but you have more of them so this was your three cylinder and then obviously we move on from that going well do you know what we might as well use our invisible line come right up with our two inlet valves as big as we can get them and they're obviously the same size they're our inlets and then have our smaller exhaust valves 
in there like so. And this was great. This was great for so many reasons. One, because of the pen roof combustion chamber, which I will do a video on uh, later on. But the other thing is as well is that your valve stems themselves are here, here, here and here. So if you want to run a um, double overhead camshaft, you can have one camshaft here and one camshaft here for your valves. Or you can run it alternately if you want to do that. You can have this running this way if you want. Or you can have an overhead cam that goes down the middle and actuates both valves um, with rockers. So you can do this any which way you want. And you get good flow, you get good scavenging, and all is good. So let's say we go to five valves, because obviously the more valves we have, the smaller they get so we can fit them into each other. But we're using more of the head as valvage. So if we have our imaginary centre line here, we have an inlet there, an intake there, an inlet there. We then have our two exhausts, valves there, in, 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 and then our spark plug in the middle. All this fantastic, we've increased our surface area, we've increased our um, cross-sectional flow rate by even more now. The problem comes is when you want to put your camshaft in because, ah balls, we don't have a straight line. We have a straight line between our, I oh know they're not straight on the drawing, but you know what I mean. We have a straight line here, we have a straight line here, but it's this one that's offset. The other problem is as well, is if you look at a cylinder head, and it's a pent roof like that, there's some kind of combustion chamber um, design in here, that all the valves stick out at that angle, where the further you go from centre, the more this angle changes. So the difference in angle here, there, is an issue. Because now we can put a camshaft here, camshaft, ah, oh, bollocks. And we have to start putting stuff in, as in, we can move the camshaft here and have rockers and blah, 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 blah. And rockers are more components and cost more and are more expensive and just, and just not as good generally. They're way more, more expensive and more things can go wrong. So why do we have the four valves? Simply because it is the least amount of parts, the least amount of complexity, and it works. And especially when you consider that we have the pent roof, which I will do, like I said, I will do a video on that. You get the most bang for your buck if you want to think about it like that. You, 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 know, you spend the least amount of money, you have the least amount of components, the least amount of complexity, and it works. You know, you can, the increase you get from having that extra valve by decreasing each one of these valves and just slotting in a second one just for the overall complexity of that, putting rockers in the weight gains and all the rest of it from doing that just to squeeze out a bit more air um, it generally isn't worth it so this is why the four valve head has basically trumped everything you can have a six um, but again the problem with the six is as soon as you start adding another one here and another one here like so, if you had six here, your valve tips are always going to be offset from each other. One thing you can do, I'll actually show you that, one thing you can do to cheat is if you had a, uh, a five valve head like this, and they're in line, these are in line, and this one isn't, is what you can do is in your combustion chamber, you can have your exhaust valves here, put E there, you can have your regular inlets there and then this one you can just still angle it this way so it either comes towards this in this direction or it is parallel so you can actually stick the camshaft right in the middle there if you make the lobes big enough you can have it catch both the problem is is that if I get rid of that just imagine them valves are still there is that you have this gap so then you have to bring your combustion chamber down to meet it so instead of having this nice pent roofed combustion chamber like this you'll have this um, boss kind of sticking out for the valve to sit in which yeah, isn't ideal but uh, yeah that's four valves and that's why four valves reign supreme for the time being and I'll see you in a bit